typical John fashion. I don't know exactly where this thing's gonna go. But I thought it was interesting. Um, I was just recording an art process slash instructional video. Uh, I haven't, <laughs> it's been a couple months since I started this whole thing, this series of how to make an abstract painting. And I, I did a lot of talking first of like, these are the things you should consider. Uh, I've applied the texture and gesso and talked about that. Um, and I also just like, I just did the video for like, hey, I'm actually making it now. Um, a couple months later, like it's, I had a title in my head before, I had a feeling, I, I hadn't, you know, usually when I make a piece, it's like really immediate, like I have a strong feeling and I still have it when I go to make the piece, that's what I want to work on. Um, so this time around it was a little different because I didn't have that same exact strong feeling. I felt like, I was like, okay, today's a good day, I've got time, it's been a while, I, it's been on my mind to do this piece. Uh, but it was kind of in a specific place. It was kind of this more melancholy thing. I was like, yeah, I think I'm there right now. I think I think I can do that. And then I started it and it really shifted on me. Um, but the thing I want to talk about and why this is a behind the curtain video is because it wasn't just the fact that I was in a different place and this is a very strange way of making a piece for me. Um, it is the act of, of recording it and having to talk my way through what I was doing that changed things a lot for me, for sure. Um, that's one of those things that at the, at the very first videos that I took, uh, there were sections that no one ever saw. When I was in Saskatoon and I got the GoPro, I was recording uh, in art placement and then I was recording on the drive from art placement to my mom's house. And during that drive home, which was less than 10 minutes, I had just caught myself so many times talking about how aware of the camera I was and how that changed my um, interactions. Like, yes, I'm talking to no one right now and I wouldn't normally do that. Or I'm talking to the camera and I normally wouldn't be just talking out loud if, if the camera wasn't there. But like, I was just all of these things about like how I was talking uh, you know, with my volume or the words I was using or the fact that I was like feeling stupid or embarrassed because I messed up a word or like stuttered or like, or those filler words like, um, or um, it, whatever, right? So I, I was so hyper aware of it. And uh, so that's one thing that's been fascinating me from day one is just like how, how, speaking to the camera is different than me just speaking in an inner dialogue, how it's different when I'm speaking to a friend um, or a, just another human being, period. Because it, it, it is very different from all those things. We talked before a little bit about external processing and I think that actually, I, I, maybe that's uh, for another time, um, I think that would be, yeah, that's for another time. But it does have some, some, yeah, some influence here in a, and what external processing is. And I think maybe I'll make another behind the curtain video soon and talk about that now that I have some deeper understanding of it. But I have talked about it in a vlog before. Anyway, um, yeah, I just thought it was interesting how it affected the painting. Because I stopped, I didn't like stop and start to like set up a camera and stuff. I just had it on the helmet and whatever. Oh, and this is the piece back here. I don't really feel like touching it right now. Um, anyway, so I just thought it was really interesting that the fact that I was recording, I couldn't get into the zone, not just because I was recording, but because I was doing something instructional. So I was like, oh, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do this. Objectively, the piece ended up okay, but it feels really weird to me, it feels a little off. Um, I like it visually, like I said, objectively, without attaching a a theme to it or a concept to it, but initially there was a concept and a feeling attached to it before I even started, and now I feel like it's only okay when it's detached from that. I just think, again, the act of recording and how I'm recording and, and the fact that I'm talking about what I'm doing changed what I was doing. It's like a metaphysics thing. I don't, I don't know. It's just one of those odd things I just noticed that I wanted to talk about because I, it's just a really different piece for me and I think a huge part of it was the fact that like, I'm recording and I'm talking about it while I'm doing it. That took me out of the moment of actually creating it. Um, it might have ended up a little weird anyway because of the waiting that I did. That's also though because of the vlog, because of, want of wanting to record it. That's why I didn't do it like 
earlier. I was like, I need a certain amount of time, I want to record it, whatever. It is the, the intention of creating a piece specifically as an instructional video is different than just when I've made art process videos that were just like, I'm just doing a painting and I'm recording it and that's it. I add some music to it, that's kind of all. I'm not, I'm not explaining everything I do, I'm just painting. I can get into the zone there and I can create almost, it seems, the same way I would normally create if there was no audience at all. I feel like I'm, I'm aware of the fact that I'm wearing this thing on my head and I've got, you know, I'm aware while I'm painting that I'm wearing this and uh, this is what I look like in the studio when I'm painting and then the GoPro sits right here. Um, so I'm aware of that a little bit and I'm aware of the fact that there's battery life, but other than that, uh, it seems easier to just go, just to get in the zone and paint. That's, yeah, there's a lot of things that, that are just, I guess, interesting about it, about doing things like that. Um, I find with biking, it doesn't, it, I'm less aware of it while I'm biking than when I am when I'm, than when I'm painting. Uh, because I just kind of turn it on and I just go and every once in a while, you know, I might turn it off if I'm taking a break or something. But I'm not, like, again, it, just having to, not having to record it, because I don't have to record it, but the act of recording it is, is changing the behavior, is changing the action, is changing the activity that I would normally be doing just because I'm recording. It's not as simple as just pressing record and going and doing whatever I was going to do. I am conscious and I am aware and I've got to stop it. I think sometimes about, oh, I've got to edit that out later. It takes me out of the moment a bit, which is, again, something I've addressed a little bit before. And, and especially when it comes to things like biking or painting, these are activities that I want to be so in the moment for. That's usually why I do them, um, because it helps me, like my mental health. It helps me be super focused and present on what I'm doing and I can't think about all the other things that may be stressing me out or whatever. It's a mindfulness activity, all those things I've said before that are true. So the fact that I'm recording it and that I'm conscious of that and, and being aware and it, and it changes what I'm doing. Like I, I really feel like with biking it doesn't change much, it's just doing this. Just like pressing it on, pressing it off. Um, I guess when I, like, I, it's just this weird thing of, of an awareness because, I mean, people look at me differently. Um, there was one time where I, on my birthday, when I was trying to do this one thing that I kind of like wrecked a little bit and I was wearing the chest cam and I was like, oh no, I hope the camera's okay. Um, I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. And and so, yeah, it's, it's weird because it's an expensive piece of equipment too. It makes me more aware of my body sometimes. Sometimes I kind of forget like that, oh, it's, it's this high and whatever and like, I, I, when I've been painting, I've definitely leaned forward and like hit the camera on, on the uh, painting or something. That's happened a couple of times. Um, but yeah, just the act of recording is changing the activity more than I thought it would. Sometimes I don't want to record or go live or anything while I paint something. I've definitely had that happen. When I ride, it's way less predictable as to what is going to happen because I'm out in nature and there's animals and, or I could crash. So I definitely wear the GoPro way more when I'm riding than when I'm painting. Because there's times where I'm painting, I'm like, I just, I don't want to record this art process video. I just want to paint right now. Uh, maybe it's because I've been in a slump or a funk or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's all really interesting of just how it, how does it, how it changes my behavior. Um, I don't do that much like public vlogging because I mean then I would really it's less interesting to me how it changes that behavior because that's too obvious of like I'm in public and normally I wouldn't be talking to myself like this and be saying certain things and whatever if I'm interacting with someone else um, you know it's just that awareness of like someone's gonna be watching this right now or like later on someone has the potential to watch it so it does change how I speak and what I do which is interesting because the whole point of this is just to show you, I mean, to, to leave uh, a record of, of me. And I guess that gets to the thing of like, there's different versions of me depending on who I'm talking to and when I'm alone. And that's, that's interesting. That's, to me, it's just like how, I mean, obviously we present ourselves to different people in different scenarios differently and, and that that's not that new of a concept but having the camera and stuff like 
would there ever be a time that I could ignore it and be me when I'm alone? I feel like if it was like a Truman Show scenario or Ed TV or whatever, where it was like, oh, there's just cameras on you all the time. Let's say they were even invisible. Let's say you can't even see them. There's not people like filming. But let's just say that I eventually, would I ever forget that the cameras are there? Or would my, would I ever get to a place where I just forget the cameras are there? Or what I think is most likely that if I had cameras on me 24 seven, I don't think I would revert back to being like so low John, like alone before cameras were on me. I think that I would just acclimate to, this is a new version of me with cameras on me all the time. I think that I, you know, the very beginning, I think it would shift from the very beginning to, to the end. Let's say it was a year long experiment or something. I think that it would shift and I would become more back to like solo John without cameras, but I don't think I'd ever be 100% there. I'd be aware of the time. I'd be aware that people are watching. I would change that behavior. I really think that's what would happen, which again, to me, for some reason is fascinating. I don't know why. I don't know why.